What is up guys and welcome back to the channel. So today we're going to continue working on the GTO, get some more stuff done. Before we do that we got to do a little bit of work on the Jimmy. Uh, so let's get to it. <laughs> Okay, so if you watched the previous video on the Jimmy, I converted the alternator to a new style LS alternator. And the alternator I got actually came off like a 2005 Envoy and it was what they call the 130D. It's a bigger alternator than most LSs have on them. So I put it on and it worked good, made the proper voltage, 14 volts like it's supposed to. Uh, some people in the comments were saying that I need to run a resistor in line and I didn't because it was working. So I thought maybe, you know, it only had to have the resistor if it didn't work good. But unfortunately, after a month or so, uh, the alternator stopped working. But it was intermittently charging, not charging. And after doing some reading, I found out that it's probably the voltage regulator that got damaged by not running the resistor. Now see, most of the time, the brown wire that comes off the alternator, it runs through the light, your alternator light, showing that the alternator is or isn't charging and that has a built-in resistor in it. But on the Jimmy, that wire doesn't work for some reason. So it could even be that resistor is bad within the dash cluster, I'm not 100% sure. But I ended up running a wire right to the fuse box and then there's no resistor in line. So pretty much the alternator wasn't working good. So what I ended up doing is going back to the wrecker, I couldn't find another one of those alternators. So I ended up getting the regular I think it's called 244 LS alternator, which is this style. So it's a little bit smaller, what my S10 has on it and the Nova and everything. So I had to modify my little adapter bracket. No big deal, got it all fitting, it's all good. Works great, except once again, uh, not having the resistor will probably cause it to fail after a short time. So uh, painless wiring actually sells a kit that comes with this plug like this with a resistor and it's like 14 bucks so it's really cheap but the resistor it's an 82 to 85 ohm 5 watt resistor so I just went and bought some from the local electronics store which is what this is right here so they're cheap they were only uh, two bucks for two of them so I ended up buying that and then what you do is you put it in line of the brown wire here, just put it in line between this wire and the car itself, of course, and that just solved the problem. So that's what we're gonna do. All right, so I just soldered it to the wires. There it is in line with the plug. This plug will plug into the stock harness for like the stock old style alternator. So I don't wanna cut it off just in case I ever need to go back to that style of alternator in a pinch. So I'm just gonna tape this up good and, uh, and install it. I would have used shrink tubing, but the wires are kind of short and I don't have any that small. There it is plugged in with the resistor in line going into the stock plug. And then I'll just tape this up. We'll give it a try. So it's a few days later, probably like four or five days at least since uh, I fixed the alternator on the Jimmy. I ended up going uh, to the States for the weekend and it was Wednesday night so we were live streaming so nothing really got done. But I'm out here in the garage again working. When I was in the States I picked up some parts so I'll kind of give you a quick overview of what I picked up. Uh, I changed the V-band clamp. I ordered a new one from Summit because it was stripped and this is a way more heavy duty one than I had on there before. I also ended up adding a fuel filter right here, um, which is forward of the fuel pump, obviously, and it's like 10 microns. So uh, hopefully that's going to solve any issues I have getting uh, crap into my injectors. So I got that from Summit also. It was like 60 bucks, pretty good deal. A master cylinder for the Jimmy because uh, I noticed it looks like it's leaking from the back and the brakes feel a bit spongy. So I got a new master cylinder. I also got some U-joints for my winter truck, my Tahoe. And I also got 
for it because I ended up taking the stereo out of the Tahoe and putting it in the Jimmy. And I don't want to take it out of the Jimmy again. So I ended up buying this one. I've seen some other YouTubers use this stereo. So I decided to buy one because it's super cheap. It was like $65 Canadian from Amazon. I ordered it a couple days ago. It already came in. So here it is. Obviously it's uh, made in China, kind of double din. And uh, like, look how small it is, it's super weird. It's really small. Um, it also doesn't have like a, a CD slot. I think that's why it's so small. But it plays MP3s, it's got aux and MP3 and for an SD card and like all that kind of stuff. It has this remote. You could mount on your steering wheel if you want. It comes with a backup camera. So that's kind of crazy and then a remote and all that kind of stuff so i'm going to put it in there and uh hopefully that's going to work out good as long as it plays music and stuff that's uh the most important thing i also want to get to work on this um, radiator support for the gto today get some stuff done on it so uh, let's do that i'm hoping that i can somehow mount the stereo to this piece because it's so lightweight and thin I don't know if I'll be able to mount it like inside the truck first and then put this on. So I'm trying to see. Plus I got a, I just figured out that uh, this stereo does not really fit in the hole that the old one came out of. I kind of hoped it was going to just go right in, but it's kind of bigger. So I'm going to have to do some modifying to this to make it fit right. And then uh, we'll figure it out. And I got the wiring harness from the truck right here. So it's pretty simple speakers power ground key power etc so i'll be able to like wire in the new wires to it all that kind of stuff and then just plug it into the truck when i'm done because the truck's outside and it's uh, rainy and kind of chilly out today so i'm trying to do as much as i can inside here so i'll take some measurements kind of and then start cutting that thing what i ended up doing is i ended up taking this little cutting wheel grinding wheel thing and smoothing this off here so I could lay this in here and then I have to cut like a thin bit of this off here and then here too to get it to fit in there nice so I don't know I bought this when I was in the States too at Harbor Freight one of these cutters I don't know if that's gonna work good or not maybe I'll give it a try and uh, see what happens I can at least make the initial like straight down cuts with this. This thing is pretty noisy, just so you know. So as you can see, that's pretty good. A little clean up maybe more, and then I'll have to take off of this side, kind of the same thing, and then I'm gonna have to make a little filler piece to go in there. Hopefully you can see what I'm talking about, a little filler there. But uh, here it fits pretty good. So I'll have to do the same thing on this side, and then hopefully it'll slide right in. All right, so I did a bunch of uh, cutting and sanding, and there we go. There she's mounted in there. So I think it looks pretty good. Except, like I said, I'm gonna have to fill in this little spot here with something. But uh, all in all, it's in there, and now I just kind of figure out how to like fasten it in there so it doesn't fall out, obviously. And then we can get onto the wiring. All right, so I've been working to get this stereo to fit here from China. I got this glue, I believe it's crazy glue here or something. I have no idea. I'm just gonna put it on the back of the faceplate here. We're gonna jam it in there, make sure it stays in place when I'm bogging deep this winter in my Tahoe. You can see the back of the stereo here. We got it glued down. You can shake it. It's super solid. It's not going anywhere. The next thing I have to do is fill this hole on the side here. And you know, I got this black plastic. I'm about, there we go. Grabbed it. I'm putting it there. And the next clip, you'll see it put there. And it's going to look finished and nice. It should look good. All right, so I made that piece of plastic. And I just glued it in there with that same glue. So uh, I think that looks pretty good. So yeah, the next thing I'm going to do is splice this original plug 
with the wiring harness and it'll be ready to go in the truck. All right, so I soldered all the wire connections pretty easy, of course, purple, purple, green, green, white, etc. Red and yellow and black. And these other ones are some extra wires for, while well, the blues for remote on for an amplifier and the other ones are other things which I'm not using. So I'll tape that up and uh, the stereo is ready to go in. I have it all installed, so I'll show it to you now. There it is. So it plays um, Bluetooth. So this is obviously from Spotify. And then you can go FM. Uh, and then it also has like, if you plug in like a one of these, you can pictures, uh, you can watch movies, which I already tried and it works good. And then your settings and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, it's pretty cool. And this dims it, I guess. It turns that off. And then you go to FM, goes to the radio. Now the only thing is, so far, I, t I put in a bunch of radio stations and then I shut it off and on and they went away. So I don't know if I have my powers hooked up backwards. I have them color coordinated, but I don't know. But there it is. So I'd say for $65 that I paid for it or whatever it was, 70 bucks pretty nice like I played a movie on it for a little bit to try it out and it plays it really good um, yeah you can't go wrong but there it is all in all that's a pretty good stereo for the price like this isn't sponsored obviously they never sent it to me uh, I'm not gonna put a link in the description or anything I found it on Amazon them on eBay just thought I'd show you guys uh, a cheap alternative to buying stereo if you need something cheap so I still got to put in this little backup camera which I will put in because why not I got it uh, but I have to run wires to the back and then, of course, mount this little camera somewhere, etc., which I'm not doing today because it's raining. So uh, that's going to be it for right now because I'm going for dinner, but we'll continue this video tomorrow, and I guess we'll get to work on this uh, radiator support for the GTO. So I'll see you guys in the morning. These pieces right here, I had kind of added them in on both sides and made it like this because the radiator that I put in is not as wide as the one that came with the car. So in order to make it look better, but then I ended up drilling a hole in it for, I thought I was going to mount the fan. So I need to weld that back up. So I'll show you what I'm going to do to weld that up. I also have to finish welding these for the um, transmission cooler. And there's a few other little spots I have to finish welding and then probably do a little bit of body work on a couple spots on the other side of these pieces maybe and get it ready to get it painted to paint it and then it can go back on the car and then like the radiator can go back in for good and stuff like that i'm going to use this little uh grinder to grind the areas do a little clean up here uh, where i need to weld When I gotta weld up a hole like this, as long as I can get in from behind, I use this piece of aluminum. You could use aluminum or brass and just put it up behind because the weld won't stick to it. There you go, all welded up. And then I'll just grind it smooth and it'll be good as new. And like I said, it didn't stick this aluminum and it filled the hole no problem. So I'm just gonna go around and weld up a few other spots and then uh, see what else I have to do to this thing. All right, so you can see here's where that hole was. So pretty much once it welded from that side, it actually welded this side too. Good, so I ground it down. I'll probably put a tiny bit of filler there maybe a little bit here and then on these kind of triangles that I welded in here when I made the two pieces you can see where it was welded on both sides I'll probably add a little bit of filler there not that it really needs it because once the radiators in you can never see it but 
just to make it look a little nicer and then sand that quick and it'll be ready to paint. All right, so I've got those spots, a little bit of filler on here, kind of here just to smooth it out. And then here where I had added some metal and, uh, and down here to smooth that part off. I mean, the most critical part would be these couple spots because you'll actually be able to see them. So now I'm just going to let it dry, sand it, and it'll be ready for paint. I also pulled the master cylinder for the Jimmy that I got from Summit out and uh, shot it with some clear engine enamel to uh, keep it from rusting. And I'm also going to put that on, but that probably will happen tomorrow. But I uh, figured I'd paint it now, let it dry. So I got all those spots sanded, shot a coat of primer over top of them. So all that smoothed out now. Like I said, it's kind of a waste of time considering you will never see most of this other than uh, up on the top here, but whatever. So uh, I'll let her dry now and then next step is to give her a coat of paint and then it can get bolted back on the car. All right, what's up guys? So I got the uh, whole radiator support painted. I figured no point in videoing that. And uh, I think it turned out all right. It's a satin black. So now I am going to put it on the car. So I think what I'll do first is I'll take the front fender off, that front fender off also, and then put the uh, radiator support back on, bolt it on, and then can start putting like the rad in and all that stuff. So yeah, let's do that. I do have all new hardware for the front fenders and everything that I bought. And now let's get this support on. I'm trying to do this without scratching the crap out of anything, everything here. So, next will be to uh, start mounting like the transmission cooler and the radiator can go back in and all that kind of stuff. I got the transmission cooler bolted on. So I got the uh, overflow bottle, which is one of those Summit bottles bolted back on. And I also had this rubber stuff here. So I cut a couple pieces and uh, I'm gonna put them there so that the radiator sits on them and then I'll probably put some up on top maybe two to keep it from uh, rubbing so the next thing is to probably put the radiator and see what happens oh. the hose clamp went flying it's pretty heavy with the fans on it this thing okay. let me just get this in here for right now loosely all right guys, so I ended up taking that off again. I found the missing clip that I was missing and I'm just painting the bolts right now. Get those on there and then uh, a lot of that'll be together. Next, I guess I can put the uh, hood latch assembly can go back on and some of those other parts that I painted, but that's gonna have to wait till the next one. So like always, like, comment, subscribe, share with your friends and we'll check you later. <laughs>